Hi, in this video we will see how we can utilize invoke custom function option from the add column tab. So this is one of the strongest features in Power Query. Imagine that we have a folder like this. So this is our folder in which every month our customer put monthly sales in Excel form. Let's say that for any reason we are not able to directly connect to the database and we can only receive data in this format. We want to analyze data on yearly, quarterly and year-to-date levels. So we need to open each Excel file, clean the data, then copy-paste the cleaned data into a combined table. Doing this job manually would be a daunting task. But let's try to get there with the use of functions. Every Excel file has the same structure. This is January Excel. We already see that we need to use fill down, arm pivot, and remove top rows. We also see that this sheet is not the only one in the Excel file. We also have an overview sheet and we have some print area object. Now, in our analysis, we only want to use January sales and February and so on. We want to exclude overview sheet and the print object. So we will need to enter every Excel, select only the sales sheet, transform it into a correct form, and lastly append all in one big table. Sounds complicated? Could be, but with Power Query we will manage this task with the help of a two-step process. The first step is to create a function from a single table, and the second step is to invoke this function on, on all nested tables from the selected folder. Let's start with the first part. We will open a single month Excel file. So we will choose to connect to an Excel file and we will select January sales. So we select January sales. And let's do all the transformations that needs to be done on this file. So let's remove these two steps. We need to remove one row. Then we need to promote headers. And we need to fill down and filter out total value. Okay, and lastly, we need to unpivot these three columns. So unpivot other columns, and this will be type, and this is value. And lastly, let's change type to a text. And this is a decimal. After we've done all the transformations, we need to convert this query into a function. So let's go to advanced editor. Uh, first, let's give this function a cool name. Let's call it fx clean. Then let's go to home advanced editor. Now we need to set the variable that will enter our function. So we'll enter the name of the variable inside of round brackets. Let's call this input input table and we need this equal and large sign to define a function as table and we need to decide where we want our input table, our argument to start in the script. So the first row, the source one, will always change. Therefore, we will remove it. The January sales sheet will also change. It will become February, become March, and so on. So we'll also remove this step. And now in the removed top rows, we know for sure that any, uh, any, any sheet, any month that come into our function will need to get its first row removed. So we know that input table is going to be pushed into this step. So now any table that we provide as an input table will enter our function at this point 
and will get all the applied steps uh, applied to it before reaching the cleaned table stage. Now let's confirm the function. We receive an fx sign, that means that the query is transformed into a function. And with this step, our first part of this tutorial ends. Now we have a proper function that will transform every table that we provide. Those tables reside in multiple Excel files in our folder. So now let's connect to that folder and start from there. So let's go to new query, more, and this time we will select to connect to a folder. Let's browse for it. It is this one. Here we can see a preview of all the tables inside of the folder and let's click on the transform data. Now just to be sure that only xlsx files will enter our query uh, so that any straight file of a different type wouldn't break the query, we will filter out any extension that does not match xlsx suffix. So let's go to transform lowercase and now let's filter out uh, let's filter out anything that should equal dot xlsx. Okay, this is just for precaution. Now we no, do not need any other column except content and name one. We'll use the name column uh, to extract uh, dates. Since the dates are in not, not in a proper form inside of an Excel file, we will use the name of the, of the file to extract them. First, let's extract the date. Uh, we will use a transform tab and let's choose to extract text after the limiter. We will choose the limiter to be a space and as we can see, the month names are always, uh, the month and years are always the last one in, in, a, in the name of the file. So we can choose to use the limiter as space and in the advanced options, we will say that we want to start from the end of the input. Okay. And after we click on OK, we will extract only a month and, and a year. And now we can choose to replace value and we will replace dot xlsx with nothing and now we receive uh, let's let's try to to see if the power query is smart enough to transform this into a date at the moment it's not so we need to let's try to replace apostrophe with space okay and now let's try to do the same oh yeah it's cool now it understands what we wish to achieve and let's just put everything into a start of the month like this and let's call this column a date column now that we have the correct date column we need to extract all objects from every Excel file in the folder. We will use a special M function called excel.workbook. So let's go to add column, custom column. We'll call this uh, column um, Excel objects and we will use excel.workbook function. Uh, we will use the content column to extract from the content column uh, our tables and we will choose false argument because we do not want to promote headers on our table and after we click ok we receive a table objects uh, i think i will need to close this excel and let's expand them and now let's just go one step back Every table, when you click on, on the table uh, near the table icon, we can see that every each of these Excels 
files hold three objects. We, it holds sales sheet, overview sheet, and print area. And every Excel file is the same, except the month name changes. Okay, so now let's expand. And here we got all objects from every table expanded. We know that we do not need any object that doesn't have sales in its name, so we can filter on the item column. So let's select the item column and let's say that we want to filter out everything that contains keyword sales. This will remove all the other objects from Excel file and all the other sheets that we do not want to include in our analysis. So now we need to keep only date column and a data column. So let's right click and remove other columns. And here we come to the final step. If we observe nested tables inside of the data column, let's click one, we can see that they all have unstructured tables. We already created a function that will transform those tables into a structured form. So now let's invoke it on every row in a table. And for that, we will use this invoke custom function option from the add column tab. So let's click on it. Let's give this column uh, cleaned tables name and the function query is the only one fx clean this one and the input table we will choose to select a column name and the column name is data this column after we confirm we receive a new column but what is the difference if we observe the data column and the tables inside of the data column we can see that they are unstructured and if we observe the cleaned tables, we can see that they are all structured ones. Now let's observe the function. The most important part of the formula is the keyword each. That keyword means that the function part, this fx clean data, will iterate through each row in the visible table, this table, and for each row, it will take the table in the date, data column, so these tables, and push it through the function. That means that in one step, all tables will be pushed through the function and cleaned. So every table from the left side gets pushed to the function and we receive a cleaned table. We no longer need the data column, so let's remove it. And the last step is to expand the column with cleaned tables. Okay. The date column will duplicate for every row of the expanded tables, while the tables will be appended into one large table. The final step is to set data types. So right click, change type into text and this is a decimal and load the query into a data model. Let's go to, okay. This feature is extremely useful when combining multiple files from the same folder or pushing paginated data into function. It has many uses and is one of the most important skills that you need to master to create robust, automatized scripts.